Okay, I'd like to call this board meeting together tonight at, uh, on Tuesday, October 17th at 7 p.m. Michael, please call roll. Trustee Burroway. Here. Trustee Humphrey. Here. Trustee Lawrence. Here. Trustee Rayberg. Here. Trustee Sabi. Here. Tr uh, President Skillman. Here. Thank you. We can please stand for Pledge of Allegiance and invocation by actually Pastor Ball tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> With your permission, I'd just like to take a moment of silence just to uh, remember uh, Trustee Schultz before we pray. So just a moment of silence. Heavenly Father, tonight we, uh, we come before you, Lord, just to... Uh, with heaviness, Lord God, and some concerns and thoughts and questions on our mind. And, and Lord God, we know that you uh, indeed make no mistakes. And so we just trust you tonight. Your, your word tells us that our, our times are in your hands. And so, Lord God, we just trust you enough that you will bring comfort, you will bring peace in this loss, Lord God, of, of Trustee Schultz. And Lord, we just pray that your peace that passeth all understanding would keep our hearts and minds in you. And so, Father, just continue to watch over our village, our, our residents, and even the family members, Lord God, we lift them up before you now in this tough time. Father, we just pray that all of us will be able to draw closer together, Father, in unity and in love. Lord, as we face the next days, weeks, months, and years ahead, Lord, we're going to do it together, Lord God, on one mind and one heart and one spirit. And so, Lord, Father, we just uh, uh, pray for direction tonight. We pray for your comforting spirit tonight. We pray, God, that you would uh, lead us and guide us into all righteousness for your name's sake. And, Lord, at the end, Lord, we know that you will get the glory and honor. And so, Lord, we pray that prayer tonight, and we ask, God, that you would continually keep us as we submit and commit all our ways unto you. Father, your word has said that we've been endures for a night, but there will be a day when joy comes. And so, Lord God, we'll never forget the sacrifice, the commitment, and all that uh, Trustee Schultz has done for this community, Lord God. And, Lord, we just pray now that we can continue on. Lord God, in the same way that she left, Lord God, working hard for the residents of the village of Carpentersville. And so, Lord, tonight we thank you for her life, and we just bless this board meeting and bless all those involved. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ball. We have a couple of proclamations tonight, so I'll go ahead and read those. Village of Carpersville Proclamation, Carl Sebastian Day, October 22, 2017. Whereas Carl Sebastian has served the Village of Carpersville as a member of the Carpersville Plan Commission from May 19, 1990 to June 1, 1995. And whereas Carl Sebastian has served the Village of Carpersville as a member of the Carpersville Zoning Board of Appeals from July 11, 1995 to December 30, 2003, including service as a chair and beginning on April 9, 1996. Whereas Carl Sebastian has served the Village of Carpentersville as a chairman of the Carpentersville Planning and Zoning Commission continuously since January 29, 2004. Whereas Carl Sebastian has served as a member of the Carpentersville Police Pension Board since November 7, 1996. And whereas Carl Sebastian's service has been an asset to the community and the village, he has served for over 27 years and whereas Carl Sebastian will celebrate his 80th birthday on Sunday, October 22nd, 2017. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, John Skillman, village president of the village of Carpentersville, do, I, do hereby proclaim October 22nd, 2017 as Carl Sebastian Day in recognition of his dedicated service to the village of Carpentersville in honor of his 80th birthday. Dated and signed, village of Carpentersville, the 17th day of October, 2017. So obviously Carl's been with us for a long time. Yes, <laughs> I've known Carl since I was a little boy. He uh, was a he was a re he's a retired state police officer. So I believe a commander at one point of his career. Yes. Oh. So yeah, he's a great guy. Um, 
So he's turning 80. He's put in a lot of time here, and he's still continuing to to service, you know, the village. So, so good stuff there. And we will be seeing his family on Sunday. Um, they're coming from all over the country to come in and see Carl for his birthday on this Sunday. So, I actually talked to his daughter in San Diego the other day about it, and she was very excited. And she's possibly watching this right now. So, <laughs> say hello to her. So, okay, second one. Honoring the Dundee Township Lions Club. Whereas the Lions International is celebrating the centennial anniversary and whereas the Lions are working to help more than 100 million people completing legacy projects that will make a lasting contribution to the community. And whereas Dundee Township Lions planted a tree in Lions Park, which is in East Dundee, to honor the Lions centennial. And whereas Dundee Township Lions is celebrating its 80th anniversary of their club and has provided lasting contributions to our community throughout their 80 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, John Skillman, village president of the village of Carpentersville, do hereby proclaim the Dundee Township Lions Club as the valued member of our community and honored that the Dundee Township Lions for its service and to the entire Dundee Township community and in honor of their 80th anniversary, dated and signed at the village of Carpentersville, King County, Illinois, the 17th day of October, 2017. Thank you. And we we got some history on that, um, and Mr. Huber helped out a little bit with this. Um, there was a gentleman that I think opened up uh, Hill. What was it, Mark? In East Dundee, Hager Pottery. Yeah. yeah. The founder of Hager Pottery uh, stressed the uh, founder of the Lions Club. So that's um, so that's what we're. I'm going to be over there Saturday morning to read this to them and present it to them at their meeting. So. At your dedication, I'm sorry. So, okay. Next on the agenda, we have no appointments, confirmations, Mike. No. Okay. Public comment. Do we have anybody? I have no one signed up. President's uh, coming. Oh, okay. Public yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Can I get my five minutes? Sure. I thought I'd blown it. You did, but we're going to let you. So. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> no problem. No. I. Uh, don't know which end of my converse, my presentation to begin with, but I think it'd be wise to uh, start with where I want to go, is to recommend to, uh, to you and all responsible individuals, like uh, the police, uh, medical people, elected officials, uh, and responsible gun owners to get together and insist, not ask, not fight, not you know, baloney around, insist on the most squeaky, effective gun control laws available that you can get to. That's where I want to get to. Uh, you know, I've, now I've said it and I can go home now. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, ended last time on an idea of addiction. Uh, which is in my mind, but there's a lady, there was a lady in Las Vegas that I only try to go by what's on the news. Uh, in Las Vegas, that was a self-indicated gun owner who was heading a group of uh, uh, gun control advocates. You see, and she was on the news, which I, I think she needs a whole heck of a lot of support, like uh, the women did when they created MAD. You remember what MAD? You know, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Well, it's time for guns. You know, gun owners responsible. Uh, she mentioned something about she didn't get, she didn't understand what she said as the fascination, the national fascination for guns. Okay, now. Uh, as a psychologist, I hear that. Uh, what it is, it's her version of kind of an addiction. You know, people are just fascinated with the, what they're doing, and they can't get off of it. And there's an illustration of uh, some individuals that make a thing out of collecting uh, military sc scale uh, uh, weapons. Now, they have no use for them other than to show them off to each other to see who's got the biggest and baddest collection. You know, well, okay, fine. But wait till some uh, joker get, breaks into the house and steals them all, then we got problems. Okay, now that's, you know, they're useless. But uh, uh, let me get to uh, some of the, pro uh, well, okay, with, in addiction, there's the, there's the users, 
But then there's the uh, suppliers, obviously the gun manufacturers, and those politicians who avoid pressing uh, more effective laws. They're, they're providers. The facilitators in my model of the alcoholic is uh, the NRA. They make excuses and make it possible. The victims are actually the co, uh, co-dependent individuals. There's usually the married, uh, the family of an alcoholic. Uh, these are the co-dependent individuals. These are both the shooters and the victims. And I mentioned shooters because they're victims too. You see, you, I kind of, uh, I don't need to explain. They're in trouble, just like, uh, you know, the victims. Uh, that's the paradigm. That's what you might be up against, this, this national fascination with guns uh, kind of thing. Um, I had my notes here, but you people are listening, so I don't have to <laughs> seem to be anyway. Um, it's not a, st oh, let me get into the business of rights. Uh, it's not a matter of uh, states' rights. It's illustrated by the flow of guns from Indiana into Chicago. That's across state lines. It's a national issue. Uh, and needs, uh, you know, we need to have effective national issues across the board. Otherwise, it's like uh, trying to stop a, the variety of laws is like trying to stop a, a leak in the dike with a sieve, you know. It just doesn't work, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, the business of rights uh, comes up, but uh, I think it's, I'm sure it's taught in the elementary schools. If people have individual rights up until the point where their, the exercise of their rights Number. affects the rights of others. In other words, the, people have the right to, to have own guns. Your uh, five minutes is up. Okay, not to have them up to the point where it affects the uh, safety and uh, civil rights of, of the public individuals. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe next time I can continue, but thank you yeah, for we'll, listening. Next time. It's not a good night tonight. We'll, um, thank you. Pardon? We're going to get you some information, okay? Can you give his address and phone number, please? That was the other thing. Have you, talked to, have you talked to our congressmen and our you know, state reps? and? Education. Yeah. You know, talk about it with the public. Oh yeah. Well, our police and firemen do that every day. We're we're one of the best. Okay, I got to sign in one. That's good in everybody else. No, no, no other comments. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a trustee so request in which the event. The item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. A motion to pass the consent agenda. I'll second. second. Motion Trustee Sabi, second Trustee Humphrey. Roll call, please. Trustee Humphrey. Yes. Trustee Lawrence. Yes. Trustee Rayberg. Yes. Trustee Sabi. Yes. President Skillman. I don't think okay. he's a need to. <laughs> How about Today. me? How about, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Going back to the beginning. <laughs> Trustee Burroway. Yes. <laughs> okay. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, reports of the manager and staff. We have one report tonight uh, from the fire chief, John Paul Schilling. Uh, just very briefly, um, as you saw in the uh, bills over this uh, last period, we uh, – received our federal grant for the new air packs that was awarded in 2016. In 2017, uh, we had a, a committee of five outstanding uh, personnel who did a, about a five-month research project and evaluation of all the different uh, makes and models out there. And it was uh, Brent Nolte, Tony Ferrero, um, Dan Bartelt, Doug Miller, and Battalion Chief Bob Beatty. Um, five-month process. Uh, we did a competitive um, bid process with uh, four companies. Two bids were submitted. We awarded the bid to Scott Air Packs, which is the same vendor that we had prior to, so the training curve is going to be a lot lessened when we recently put these back into service. But the two things I did want to, to note and to bring your attention to was there's two, two new features of the Air Packs that, that we incorporated into this version is more air, 
so the firefighters have more time to for fire and search and rescue uh, purposes but also more time if they get caught in trouble there's more time for them to have air to get out and the other the other thing is uh, with the advancement of technology it's amazing what we're doing today uh, each mask that all frontline apparatus seats have has a built-in thermal imaging camera Ooh. inside the mask um, that's cool that's great yeah it really will speed up the rescue efforts and instead of just one person holding one and directing people everybody has a view of everything in the in the room so the the chances of us finding somebody in a rescue situation is greatly uh, enhanced with this with this new feature um, otherwise they're um, you know very ergonomic wear they're a little bit heavier but you don't feel it because of the the new design that they have um, and the last thing I have for you is uh, Lauren Rohr from the Daily Herald is doing an article on it. should be online tomorrow and in print on Thursday. So, Great. Is it like cover the whole mask or is it like in a section? Or down in the corner. Section. Yeah. So the camera itself is on the outside of the mask and the, and the viewing screen is there. It uh, doesn't replace the big handheld ones that have other sure. uses, but it definitely is going to make things a lot safer for the firefighters and a lot safer for the public. And from a budget point of view, do you want to just explain? Yeah, um, this was a um, an item that was due to be replaced in 2018. We received a grant for $262,000, and um, of which the village only had to provide 10% of. So we deferred 90% of that cost um, through this grant process. Nice. And the firefighter, the chief grant writer for that one was yeah, Tony Ferrero again great uh, that was the fifth award he had so and we still have one out there that's hasn't been a, approved or denied yet so we're still we're waiting so rain rainmaker mm -hmm. great no I, I actually looked at them and uh, they're very very nice so I got to try on the mask and it's pretty Thanks, cool stuff pretty neat that would conclude the managers great report. thank you o any old business no old business any new business? No new business. Trustee and committee reports. This is the new agenda, by the way, if you guys didn't uh, realize it. So, Speak um, Trustee Humphrey. <coughs> um, so next week we'll have a uh, business development commission meeting on <coughs> Tuesday night at 5 o'clock. It'll be up on the second floor. Uh, we're going to be talking about rebranding efforts and continuing our discussion and um, uh, debriefing from the uh, uh, the business strategies uh, I'm sorry is that the right is that, uh, yeah business strategies uh, uh, organization who uh, represented us at Navy Pier um, with new companies so that'll be retail next strategies. yeah retail strategies I'm sorry thank you uh, that'll be next Tuesday um, obviously it's a pretty sad day here uh, especially difficult uh, for me personally uh, with losing trustee Schultz it comes as quite a shock um, uh, I met Pat. She was a commission member, one of the first commission members on the finance commission that we that we started uh, shortly after the whole problem that the village experienced with uh, not being able to get a clean financial statement review from our auditors. Um, and Pat was, um, you know, involved with that right from the beginning. Um, it's it's it, you know this is shocking uh, to lose someone like this and. I, I think the best thing, you know, I'm looking back at the time that we shared together, and I know Pat had nothing, you know, but the best intentions for this town. She wanted this town to be the best it could be, and I, she was very, she had gone to Barrington High School and um, was always, I, th I think, a little bit uh, concerned that people that looked at our town uh, looked at it in a uh, in a bad light, and she didn't like that at all, and wanted to change that, and she really, I think, helped change that. Um, we, you know, moved forward with the financial statements, and were able to not only, you know, win awards for our financials, estate, our statements, but also our budget. She was instrumental in, in putting that together. I, I guess the best way I'll, I'll remember her is. If I couldn't get Pat to understand what I was trying to do, I knew that I probably wouldn't be able to get the rest of the town to to agree. <clears throat> she was very inquisitive, and and as it was 
stated in the, the uh, press release, she watched, she wanted to know where the money was going. Why did we have to do that? Was there another way? Um, I, I don't, I don't think we would have seen that bike park come to, fru to fruition without, without her. Um, I can go back over a number of things that we did together. You know, we served together for eight years on this board, um, eight and a half years. Uh, she was instrumental in putting the street plan together uh, in agreeing to do some of the work in-house and then start looking at, and at the time it made sense because it was cheaper for us to do it in-house as we're today with the economy. It's kicking, it's coming back, but once it took a downfall, it became cheaper for us to go to a third party. So we always weighed the options. Do we do something in-house or do we go outside? Um, I'm gonna miss her greatly. I, I still like am a little bit in a daze here that I, I keep expecting to get this phone call from her. Paul, I gotta talk to you about something, you know? Um, and, and you know, she was a good friend of mine and a good friend of my kids and um, she'll be greatly missed. And um, I hope, uh, uh, I, I, I want to thank everybody that has sent uh, well wishes to the village and has thought of us uh, throughout this process. It, it means a lot. Um, it'll be a tough end to the week, um, and um, it's never easy to go through these situations. Um, you know, it, there's sitting up here and you, you build a camaraderie with people, no, no matter whether you're you have differences of opinion or not, uh, you build a camaraderie over time. And, it, 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 you know, when you have talks with, you know, when I have talks with you guys, I, I don't say things to you, other people that I would say to you, um, you know, about how we're moving forward. And, and it makes, that makes it especially difficult to not have someone like that to be able to, you know, ask questions, does this sound legitimate? What, you know, what do you think of this idea? Um, that'll be the toughest part, not being able to pick up that phone and call her. I mean, I'll call a bug the rest of, them, of course, you know, but, but that'll be the toughest part. She'll be greatly missed, and I'm, you know, it's just a very sad day, and uh, I appreciate the extra time today. Thank you. Trustee Lawrence. I don't know how I can top that off. Um. Uh, next Wednesday is um, our events meeting at 6.30 at Public Works. Um, in addition, um, in the short time that I've known um, Trustee Schultz, um, her biggest passions were her love for Carpentersville, her events, her kids, her, her grand, um, grandchildren, um, or child, I should say. Thanks grandson um and just kids in general uh so with with i want to extend my heartfelt sympathy to the family and let them know that they have been in my prayers and thoughts that's all i have okay thank you trustee burway <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> on the 12th we had a uh, c4 uh, meeting uh <clears throat> And uh, uh, it started at 7 o'clock at the <coughs> Public Works. Uh, we covered uh, several items. Uh, first, we celebrated our one-year anniversary uh, to, uh, <coughs> to have a little party and a uh, little pizza. It was, it was good. It was very nice. And uh, thank you, Chief, for providing that and everything. Uh, <clears throat> we also worked on identifying uh, individuals, organizations, and businesses, and I stress businesses, to fill our 12 sectors. <clears throat> when we go to apply for a grant, we got to have the 12 sectors uh, filled. We have to have people that we can put down uh, that uh, support uh, C4, um, and one of the places that we're lacking is in businesses. Uh, so we we do we did have a brainstorming situation uh, yeah situation where we came up with ideas for businesses that we could incorporate into our <clears throat> into C4 and uh, help us out and we helped them and 
and so we will be probably contacting those uh, individual businesses uh, uh, to see if we can fill that sector. And like I said, it, it goes to a long way for us securing a DF, a DF, uh, C grant, uh, which uh, the application should be coming out in mid January. Uh, so <clears throat> we can get those people on board. Uh, so any individual, anybody from uh, from the Carpentersville that wants to join, please. Our next meeting is November. Uh, it's posted on our, our, our web page. Um, we also welcomed uh, Michael Contreras from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dundee Township. He's the new president over there and seemed real interested in what we were doing. So we were able to incorporate them into our, <clears throat> into our meeting um, and we'll be in contact with them. Also, we... <clears throat> received an award or I should better say Chief Kilburn and the Carpentersville Police Department received the partnering partner in empowering lives award from the Wren Center and it's a uh, this award is given to organizations and their leaders who help Wren Center fulfill their mission to empower individuals to lead healthier lives so congratulations to you, uh, Michael, and uh, to the police department in this ward. Thank you. That was a real nice thing for the Red Center to do. Uh, <clears throat> our next meeting is November 9th, 7 o'clock, Public Works. Uh, if you can come out, please, I in, uh, invite everyone to come and show up for that meeting. Um, gosh, I, I, I'm at a loss for words to say anything about Pat. Uh, it was a complete shock to me that uh, that, that happened. Uh, I've been thinking about it a lot, and, and I too remember some of the uh, <clears throat> things that she has helped me with so much uh, with her knowledge and, and uh, of this board and, and the things that we do and her opinions always respected those opinions they were always with the residents first and that's the way it should be uh, residents come first for her uh, always asking is like you said uh, the do we have to spend all this money can we, you know what's the residents point of view you know look at what they're looking at and that was it was a great asset uh, personally, she helped me uh, uh, run two elections, you know, helped me extensively in the last election. Um, although we were on complete polar opposites on political views, we were able to <coughs> come together and work together on, uh, on the business of the village. And she passed on so much knowledge t to me, and uh, uh, I too would sit down and have coffee for uh, with her uh, a lot. I think a lot, and uh, considered her a colleague and a friend. And I miss her already. I miss her deeply, and this uh, this community misses her. Uh, all the all the things she she done, and one of the things she she always liked was planting plants and trees. She was big on that. Loved to, you know, beautify Carpentersville. And uh, I just thought that was excellent of her. And uh, uh, I'm about to break down. So thank you. Thank you for letting me talk. Thank you, Trustee Burway. Trustee Sabi. Um, I just wanted to briefly say thank you to Pat for loving carpentersville you know i i had only lived here for just over a year when i decided to run for trustee 
And uh, she was one of the first people I talked to. Kay Teeter introduced me to her and said, you should sit down with Pat and talk to her. And, and you know, she wanted to know why I wanted to run and, and what I was interested in. And uh, she gave me my first tour of Carpentersville. We got in her little car and drove me all over, showed me every, every different street, told me the history of the water towers and, and how everything had been, and showed me where it, where it's now Carpentersville, where it wasn't before. Um, and she was just very proud to be a resident of Carpentersville. She was proud to be an East Sider. Uh, she, was, she was proud to have grown up. And, and you know, it's funny you mentioned the trees because she was always so proud that we were, were known as Tree City. That, that was a big thing for her. But um, the other part of it was, too, was, you know, she was the chairman for the special events committee in the last couple of years. And she took a lot of pride in that. She took a lot of pride in planning events that, that people could be excited about and, and that they could get interested in. And uh, I, I know that that was one of her great contributions that I always saw. So I just wanted to say thank you to her for showing me around and showing me the love for Carpentersville. And I know she's going to be, be greatly missed by many of the residents here. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Sabi, Trustee Rayburg. Uh, this is a, a busy time of year for us at Audit and Finance. Um, we have a meeting in a couple days, October 19th, to cover uh, IT, police, uh, fire, and HR, and community development. It's budget season. This is when the departments give their presentations on what, uh, what they achieved in the last year, and then also what they hope to achieve in the next year, and then what budget line items they will need to uh, achieve those goals. So it's a matter of prioritizing for the commission, prioritizing across all of the departments, kind of a, a list of A to Z, what's most important to least important, what can, what, what do we need to uh, spend money on this year versus what can be pushed off into, into the following years. Uh, November 9th is when our next scheduled meeting is, and that will be for fire and public works. And then November 13th, uh, will be sort of the final budget presentation uh, meeting. And these are all at 6.30 uh, in the Public Works building. That November 13th meeting will cover off our capital improvement plan, surf fund, debt abatements, and then kind of the overall presentation, the overall discussion. So that's when we'll really have the, the discussion of uh, what we feel, where we feel the money should should be spent. So. Three meetings kind of coming up, boom, 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 for audit and finance. This is, uh, this is when we make our bones. This is, this is when we really um, have to or want to learn a lot about the village and, and where the, the money's going. And that's it's certainly where we'll be missing Pat, too. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I had to write this down. <laughs> I read an interesting uh, definition recently about the rules for being a good person. It read, stand up for your principles and be loyal to your family and friends. Pat certainly did all those things and even managed to go beyond that with a deep loyalty to our community as well. The amount of time that she spent volunteering in the community on projects is immeasurable. Uh, mowing strangers' yards, painting their houses. It, uh, it showed true dedication to the people and place that she loved. Um, Pat showed that unwavering dedication right up to the end. I, uh, I reached out to her late Sunday night via text to get, uh, to get her opinion on how to handle a community member's questions about Lake Marion. Lake Marion is this, this place kind of around Carpentersville that we service in a number of ways, but isn't directly under Carpentersville's jurisdiction. So I just wanted to get kind of her opinion on, on uh, sort of best course of action for this community member's concerns. Uh, anyone else would have responded in the morning or later the next day on Monday. Um, Pat responded in less than five minutes. We talked about that, and we also talked about how to best fill the empty store frontage on Randall Road. We talked about out-migration from Illinois and uh, her plans to volunteer even more after she was done with the Special Events Committee. Pat's legacy to the community will be the parks that she worked so hard on that provide enjoyment to families, and will provide enjoyment uh, for families for generations to come. 
and also on the strong financial principles that she uh, that she fought so hard to achieve. Her legacy to her family is even more impressive, raising two great kids who will no doubt carry forward those principles of loyalty to family, friends, and community. She'll be missed by all who knew her, but her hard work and dedication will benefit our community for generations to come. Maybe a better definition for the rules of being a good person could simply read, be more like Pat Schultz. Thank you. All right, so um, I have an announcement. Uh, we have a 60 year anniversary for the Carpentersville VFW on this Saturday night. If, is anybody available for that? I have a rotary commitment already, Saturday night. I'm at a wedding, sorry. Yeah, I don't know if anybody can make it. What day? Saturday night at the VFW. Possibly, oh, we can talk about it. We can talk about it after, okay. Um, but it's their 60th anniversary, so. And Rosemary is um, Rosemary's our RSVP there, so if we, if we can help them out, they uh, they'd like someone to attend from the village. So um, I'd echo everything you guys said about Pat. Obviously, Pat and I had our differences. Um, we had a, a rough campaign. Um, you know, uh, we uh, we had lots of arguments, but we you know I've always respected Pat. Um, for what she's done, she's she's very passionate, like we all said about the parks and and finance. Manager Rooney told me she was she read every word and she read it over and over and over, so she, I could count on her to know exactly what was going on in the packet. Um, sometimes where we some of us maybe skipped over some of it, or uh, but we knew Pat we knew Pat knew it though, so so I always looked up to her that and respected her for that. So, but uh, definitely uh, we're going to miss her with the parks committee. She was. Um, very passionate, like we said, and uh, we actually our last conversation was about uh, about the events committee, about actually looking at, and hopefully we can do this actually for Pat and uh, hire somebody. She wants she wanted to hire. We were discussing hiring an events planner, you know, to help out with the committee and actually come to the committee meetings and represent and help Bob as liaison, and maybe maybe take Bob out of that position so he doesn't have to be here every night to work, but. Uh, we discussed it. She was very excited about getting somebody in here and helping and, and, and making Carpenterville Park, you know, great again. So um, so I'd just like to echo again what everybody else said about her, and uh, we're going to miss her. So thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. All right, that concludes our trusting committee reports. Um, any, we don't have no closed session tonight, correct? And um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Motion, Trustee Sabi. Second, Trustee Rayberg. Voice call, please. Trustee Lawrence. Yes. Trustee Rayberg. Yes. Trustee Sabi. Yes. Oh, yeah. Trustee Burroway. Yes. Trustee Humphrey. <coughs> yes. Uh, there you go. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we're adjourned.